All right, so you've purchased a server with whatever provider, and you want to be able to install an operating system of your own on, on your dedicated server. And maybe you've gone through the panel and you've noticed that there is no ability to do that. Maybe they have templates that you can deploy from, different versions of operating systems that you may want to install, but, but not your own, uh, not one that you've set up from the ground up. Uh, and that is where this video comes into play. So I went with kimsufi.com. They are a great provider for dedicated servers for a very cheap price. And they give the ability to have this, what's called a rescue mode. Uh, and you can see here that I've booted up into customer rescue mode. And that is a very important step in this process. When we boot into uh, net recovery mode, it allows us to install an operating system uh, into RAM or random access memory. Uh, from the panel, you can see that there's a Rescue Pro and a BSD. Uh, I always go with the Rescue Pro drop down. It's a, it's a Debian version of Linux. Uh, the other one, uh, it looks like, is a, is a BSD iteration. Um, but that is very important because once you boot into that mode, you're able to grab an ISO from whatever uh, distribution of Linux that you want, and you can use a program called QEMU, which stands for Qu Quick Emulator, and you're able to emulate a hard drive and use that ISO that you've downloaded to deploy the operating system of your choice onto the hard drive of the server that you've booted into. So that's, that's pretty cool, right? You can... W from memory, you're able to mount the drive uh, and deploy your own version of whatever version of Linux that you want. So once I've booted up, uh, I can go over to my terminal and I can SSH to the server that they've provided. Once you get in, you're able to download the ISO file that you want. So I went ahead and went with CentOS. Uh, you have to download the ISO file from whatever version of whatever operating system you want. It's very easy. Just do wget followed by the URL uh, of the ISO file. It needs to be a direct link. Uh, I went ahead and already downloaded it because uh, it took quite a while. Um, but as you can see, it's about seven gigs in size. Uh, so obviously you're going to be limited to the size of the operating system you're going to be able to install uh, is, is a direct correlation between how much RAM you have. So I have 16 gigabytes uh, of RAM. Uh, so that way I'm able to download a seven gig file with no problem. So that being said, uh, you're going to also need to download this QEMU program. Uh, QEMU stands for Quick Emulator. Uh, it allows a lot of stuff, uh, most of which uh, we won't even get into. Um, but what it is going to allow us to, to do is mount this, virtually mount this ISO file in RAM uh, and then deploy an operating system from it. So it's, it's pretty cool. I will give links to both of these. Uh, QEMU is the most important uh, component in this process. So there are two ways to do this. Uh, there is the quick way and then there's the quick way. <laughs> They're both the quick way. Um, one is the wrong way and one is the right way. Uh, you can start this session, this emulated uh, session over VNC using the IP address of your server that it's listening on. Or the better way, and I think the correct way to do it, uh, is to listen on localhost for the VNC server and then do what's called a, uh, a, a, a tunnel, SSH tunnel, to the server and tunnel that VNC communications over SSH. That way uh, your stuff is not viewable in plain text. So it's very easy to do. Uh, so we need to go to wherever we downloaded this QEMU program. Uh, and we're going to specify a drive flag. Uh, well, before we do this, uh, you'll need to look at your disk 
uh, and do an F disk dash L. Uh, and we can see that the, the drive that we're using is SDA. This one, two, and threes are just the partitions. We don't care about that. So once we have that information, we're going to be able to build uh, this command that we're about going to run using QEMU. Uh, so first things first, let's uh, set up a, a network. And all this does is it creates a new network interface uh, for our guest machine. Uh, and then we will do a net user. And all this does, uh, it uses the user mode uh, network stack, which requires no uh, admin privileges uh, to run. So that's okay. Uh, and then... We're going to want to do a host forward. Don't really worry about what these commands are. Uh, just know that they are necessary. Uh, in this case, we'll do 80. Port 80. So what this host forward does is it redirects incoming TCP or UDP connections um, to the host port 80 from uh, to the guest port uh, 80, uh, which is what we're what we want when we boot into that uh, virtualized uh, environment. Uh, and then from there, we're going to go ahead and we'll specify a memory flag. We'll do a gig of memory. Uh, we'll enable KGM. Uh, make note of this uh, particular flag. If you do not have a uh, CPU that is uh, capable of running KVM, uh, then this won't be necessary. Uh, it, it does help. Uh, I've noticed without it, uh, response times and load times are a lot slower uh, because the QEMU is, is, is responsible for making all the interpretations um, between the guest uh, OS and the, and the machine. So if you have a KVM-enabled uh, processor, this is going to make things a lot faster. Uh, and then we'll do our drive, and we know from looking at before we had SDA. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a CD-ROM. This is going to emulate the CD-ROM of our guest machine. And we want to put in the CD-ROM the ISO file that we downloaded, whatever their operating system or ISO file you want to boot into. Uh, and then we'll need a VNC flag. Now, this is where it's going to be important to put the IP address of your server, or in this case, I'm going to be listening on uh, localhost, uh, and that way we can create a, a tunnel and, and, and do this over SSH. Uh, it's much more secure that way. Uh, and then we want to boot from it. So you run that command. Oh, I made a mistake. Uh, uh, surely it's not because there's a space there. Yeah, uh, I accidentally put a space uh, after the comma after user, no spaces. Uh, so that's fine. Once it, it returns a new line, uh, we're now ready to create our tunnel. So now we're going to want to open up a terminal to issue this tunnel. So we can do an SSH at your server. We're going to do a local port of 5900 listening on localhost with a remote port of 5900. So now that we have logged into there, it will go to a, uh, a new line uh, and that tunnel is done so we can minimize that window. So now open up your VNC client that you're going to be using to connect to the server. And now we're going to, our remote host is going to be localhost with a local port of 5900 and it's going to tunnel all of this stuff through this session that we, we created uh, and connected to our VNC session over here. So we'll connect to that. It'll pull up. Uh, it's, it's going to take a little while to boot in. We are doing this through, uh, through RAM, so it's going to have to do a bunch of decompression and stuff all in RAM. Uh, so I'm going to pause the video while this is happening. All right, so we have now successfully booted into the CentOS uh, ISO image. Uh, and we are presented with the welcome screen, which is good. Uh, so from this point, we can go and start setting up our partitions uh, and other stuff like that. So just click on continue, and it'll uh, take us to the next screen. Um, so here we need to specify a few stuff. 
Uh, so we'll just go into the system uh, and select the disks. And we'll, we'll be able to see here that, that it is the QEMU hard disk. That is our actual disk that we want to do. Uh, and the QEMU is, is allowing us to see this now. It's, it's, it's uh, mapping that on the back end uh, to the actual physical disk. So we'll go ahead and select that disk uh, and click Done. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, you might get a, uh, this message if you have some stuff on here. Uh, we'll reclaim all of the space. So that's fine. We'll go ahead uh, and uh, we'll let that, we'll reclaim all of that. We'll just delete all of it. All right, reclaim space. Uh, and then once that uh, has completed, we can now begin our uh, installation. Uh, you can go through here and specify some other stuff, some different software selection, security policies, whatever you need to do, the network um, uh, settings and such. You, you might want to go ahead and do all that, and we can begin our installation. We'll set the root password. I'll just do a weak one. That's fine. And that will be there. We'll go ahead and create a user. And we'll be done and we'll let that uh, install itself. So uh, that might take a little while. So we'll, I'll pause the video again and we'll resume when it takes back off. All right, so uh, the installation has finished, and now we can issue a reboot on the machine. Uh, and we should stay connected to the console. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so... Now we just need to stop this uh, QMU from boot booting from the CD. So to do that, we'll bring up our session, kill out of that, uh, and now if we go back to the Kim Sufi website, we should be able to uh, restart our, our server. Uh, oh, first of all, you're going to have to change it from net mode and boot directly from the hard disk. Uh, and then reboot it. Okay, so now we'll we'll do a re reboot. So it should uh, pull up from that. Uh, we'll let that we'll let that finish. All right, so uh, the server has rebooted. So now we should be able to SSH to our server. Uh, so. and type in the password that you set. And there we go. Uh, it's working. And we are on the version of CentOS that we installed. So that is the extent of this tutorial. For more videos like this one, please visit my blog at cstanley.me. Uh, if you have any suggestions, I would love to hear your ideas. Uh, I, I love going through these videos and explaining them because uh, I always learn too. You know, it's uh, the more you do this, the more you learn. So uh, until next time.